Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for my last week of April wrap up, and then going over the two readathons that I'm planning to do in May. And yeah, just giving some further updates. So last week, I left off with you guys wondering if I was going to get Lightblade finished before my deadline, and I did. I got it finished on Sunday night, and this is Lightblade by Zamil Akhtar. I'm not going to give you too much details in this video because I do have a full review coming out, but this is about a young man who alters his dream stone to become a light blade training program. In this world, uh, your body is modified where you can put in different stones. The color of the stone says what light your body is going to be absorbing from the sun and then put pushing through your veins. So for example, a dream stone is orange, takes an orange light. Machinists take in green light, light blade, or you know, soldiers take in red light. So those sorts of things. Healers take in purple light. Yada yada. So this young man has modified his dream stone. He is actually in a work camp prison and he modifies it to become a training program because he wants to kill the emperor. And then as soon as he starts using his dream stone, all of a sudden he doesn't remember why he wants to kill the emperor. Not a huge fan of the amnesia trope. It does and get all worked out. His country then is invaded by another country and he's trying to get out. His light blade training program has enough personality or scripts is what they call to help him learn how to modify other things in his environment to allow him to try to get him to escape. And you find out pretty early that there is a, another force who is who, who cares about his well-being, and that's all you know. So he goes on this adventure. Now this is a plot-centered book. When the plot needs him to be in point X, it happens, and then he reacts to it and deals with that plot point as it comes. So if you're a character reader, this is going to feel more frustrating because he's not actively making the decisions. And then when he does make a decision, the motivations behind it kind of were suspect to me. It depends how much you want your characters to lead the plot or not. I don't know how to describe it better than that. At least not here. Like I said, there's going to be a full review coming out later after this video. The book is solid enough that I am curious what is going to happen next. This book definitely ends where you know there's going to be another one, but the events of this book do wrap up. So, yeah, so you're not getting a cliffhanger, which is good because I don't like cliffhangers. And then I finished Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is the, with all the papers in it. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I actually like this better. Typically this book is my least favorite. No, I take that back. This is, yeah, no. This has been my least favorite Harry Potter book in the past, but reading it and now knowing the full arc, I can see how much Rally really was plotting things along and I really enjoyed it. Like, it it definitely went up for me in my estimation. So that was surprising. Um, and so that's all I finished this week. I then picked up The Alchemy of Sorrow, which is my book for my buzzword prompt for April because it's emotion, sorrow, but also works for my public health readathon prompt of trauma and empathy because these are short stories. These are science fiction fantasy short stories centered around grief and hope. 
really enjoying this. I'm just reading this slowly. Definitely not going to have it done before April's done. I then picked up book number three of Harry Potter, which I had to get from the library. And I was looking to get a smaller edition and somehow ended up with this. However, this is a fully illustrated book and the artwork is gorgeous. Like this is where the Defense Against the Dark Arts class is fighting the Bogart, I think. Yeah. And then the next page. So gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. I definitely want to look, it's illustrated by Jim K, and I definitely want to look him up more to see what other artwork he does because I just love it. And I'm enjoying my reread as well. You know, historically, this has been my favorite Harry Potter. And then I also picked up Spear by Nicola Griffin or Nicola Griffith. I don't remember. I don't have it with me because I already had to turn it, return it to the library. I'm filming this a little bit later than I normally do. This is a retelling of Percival, the Arthurian character, which I didn't know going into it. And so I was kind of confused at the very beginning. And it's written, I would almost say in like the style of the Arthurian legends, at least the few that I have read, very flowery and the, like goes back and forth with the rhythm. It's not a, it's not an epic poem, but it's a, I think as close that a prose story can be to that kind of rhythm. And it wasn't really working for me. So I put it down for now. I had to go back to the library because someone was waiting for it and I'm going to get it again in the future because I am interested to know what's going on. I don't know a lot of the Arthurian myths. So because I was so confused, I had to go look up what, which myth is this that I'm reading? Cause I had no clue. And that's when I was like, Oh, Percival. Oh yeah. He did grow up in a forest away from contact. I now know what the author's doing, or at least the setup is. So this week I am working on Crucible of Hell again. I want to get this finished. I had put it aside for my readathon reads of April. I'm also going to be reading Crumbs by Danny Sterling. And this is a graphic novel about a witch. I've heard lots of cute things about it. And I actually kind of started it today and I'm really enjoying it so far. So I guarantee that this is going to be done before the end of next week. And then we probably will have my other readathon read. So that's a perfect segue. I need to get them. I'm back with my readathon books, or at least the ones I have currently. So for my first readathon, I am doing May of the Moderns, which is run by Margaret Pinard. This is her last year doing this, so if you're interested, this is definitely the year to participate. Now there are five categories, but you can read books that cover multiple prompts. So the first one is Irish or Celtic. The second one is Author of Color. Third category is Translated. Fourth is Backlist and fifth is genre. So I actually have two books that I'm pretty sure fit all five of the prompts. The first one I'm going with and was backlist, meaning it was actually my TBR from last year and I didn't get it read. It's translated and then it's also written by an Asian author and that is Humans, Beasts, and Ghosts. And this is by King Jong Shu. So this is a series of essays. My mother read this last year. We were both supposed to read it, but she didn't finish it until June. She said that the essays were just so thought provoking. She just would read one every few days and just kind of really ponder them. So this is another one that I'm planning to read. And then for genre, science fiction fantasy is my jam. I was looking for stuff. And then for the Irish, I found one that fits both of those, and that is Out of the, Sp Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. He was born in Ireland, and this is his science fiction. didn't realize it was actually so short. I've only read the Narnia books by him, 
Nope, I take that back. I read the Narnia books by him and his screw tape letters. So some very interesting things going on in those. So I'm curious to see if I'm gonna like his science fiction. And then the second readathon I am doing is the Chaos Queens. And they have two teams. They have the Sky Team and the Sea Team, and I'm participating with the Sky Team prompts. And so theirs is a little bit different. They also have five prompts, but their prompts are writing, reading, watching, self-care, and making. So for writing, it's have an internet-free writing day. Always been intrigued by that. So really excited to see how this will go. For reading, it's read something with a sky word or image on the cover. And for this one, I am waiting for Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee to come in from my library. This is also the book I have chosen for my 2000 to 2023 challenge. So it takes care of two birds with one stone. For the prompt of watching, it's to watch something not on the screen. So that means go to a play or something I've been interested to do for a while is there is a park nearby that does an astronomy night and you can go out and they have people from the local astronomy club who will help you look at the stars. So that is my plan. For self-care, it is do a physical or a digital declutter. And since moving into this office, I have my bookshelf set up how I want, but the rest of it is kind of messy still. So definitely need to do this declutter. I was like, this, that's just a perfect fit for me. And then for making, the prompt is make a food or drink based off of your work in progress. I do not know what that's gonna be yet because I am not sure what my work in progress is going to be. But that's a great segue into my writing wrap up. before I had mentioned that I had some ideas spark and I wrote out the first three scenes and I have them just attached to my computer to make it easier for me so when I I'm ready to write there my scenes are right there and I'm gonna see what how that goes I'm not typically a plotter but what I found is if I have three scenes kind of in my head of how the of how things go then I can progress pretty well uh, you know sitting down to write and knowing what you're gonna write means that the writing is easier but knowing too far in advance for me or making a plot outline I feel like when I make an outline I have to stick to it which is part of my thing whereas if I only go oh here's my next three scenes if my characters do something in one of these scenes it's much easier and it feels like way more low stakes for me to change things around. That is what I'm planning to do this next week. For other media, I finally finished watching um, my, as far as I can for the Midsummer Murders got through season 21 and then the next two seasons on Amazon are part of the package that you have to pay for. I'm just gonna call it good where I am for now and wait till those become free to watch or go underneath my BritBox subscription. That's the one thing I don't like about it, the Amazon Prime where it has like eight bajillion subscriptions that you can sign up for when really it's like just make it all free. <laughs> or like if you paid the, for the Prime, you should get it all. It shouldn't be under lock and key some things and other things, different promotions. I hate it. But I'm not the one who pays for the Prime, so. I, I'm To me, it's free. But it's also leaving me questioning what show I'm gonna pick up next. <laughs> So coming up next, it will be my review for Lightblade and also 
the announcement for the finalists for the self-published science fiction contest. It's Sunday. It's the last day in April, and I don't know who the finalists are yet. Once I do know, I will be filming a video of it. So that's what you can expect from me here in the future. I hope you guys have had a wonderful April, especially because I'm biased because it's my birthday month. So yeah, I'll see you guys later.